Here we go, October's voted thematic list build. Thank you all for placing your votes. I don't think we could get a more suitable choice than the Greenskins. This one is for one of the most cunning orc clans. Orcs who implement advanced tactics. A thematic list build for the Blood Axes. The Orc Clan's subfaction rules are classified as clan cultures, and the Blood Axe's culture is tactics. It provides them with the benefits of light cover against attacks that are more than 18 inches away, and allows units to shoot or charge in a turn in which they fell back. The first perk speaks to the sneaky nature of the Blood Axes. The second perk is far more interesting, speaking to the tactical acumen of the Blood Axes. Having an army which is able to leverage the capacity to shoot or charge after falling back grants the Blood Axes a huge boost in flexibility, creating options for Blood Axes players where other Orc clans would have far fewer. I quite like the Blood Axes kit. Their preference for using tactics positions them uniquely compared to the other Orc clans despite not being as loud with their themes compared to the Evil Suns or, say, the Bad Moons. But that's okay, because Blood Axes want to be sneaky. Regarding the thematic objectives of the list, they are Sneaky Gits To field units which speak to the Blood Axe's stealthy, duplicitous nature, enabling them to maximize their strength and flexibility. And Tactical Organization To field units organized in a fashion which could only be conceived by the highly strategic culture of the Blood Axes. Now, let's head over to the list breakdown. Following the conventions of a logically organized force, the list is structured as a battalion. Let's begin with the troop slots of this finely tuned military group. Taking up five troop slots are five units of Grots. These Grots will serve as our infantry squads. Now while Grots do not gain the benefits of Objective Secure, they are cheap at a power level of two. And interestingly, with one command point, it allows us to put four of these Grot units into strategic reserves, which will allow them to jump out and help with objectives like engage on all fronts. The last unit of Grots will function in the way an infantry squad typically would, which would be to either serve as a screening unit for something more valuable, or to help fortify an objective. With our cheap fodder filled out, we can move on to the elites. Filling the role of infiltration specialists are three units of commandos. Their role will be to take advantage of their forward deploying ability ideally onto a terrain feature so they can take advantage of their abilities, granting them an improved cover save and plus one to wounded melee. And because the Blood Axes have been graced with a supplement of supporting rules, Commandos have a few bonus stratagems they can take advantage of. A few of my favorites are, Spotted them will deny an enemy unit the benefits of cover if visible to a Blood Axes Commando squad. And, Surprise will force an enemy unit fighting a group of Commandos in terrain to fight last and they will have to subtract one from their hit rolls as well. Bringing in some deadly firepower are two heavy weapon teams. Both of these tank buster units are loaded up identically. They are 10 strong, all equipped with rocket launchers, and with each unit taking a bomb squig to provide some cheeky mortal wounds should they get danger close. To protect these two heavy weapon teams and provide them some mobility are two trucks taken bare bones. Where the heavy weapon teams bring the pain at range, Taking another elite slot is a unit of veterans, geared for close combat. The unit is 9 strong, with each veteran knob being equipped with 2 choppas. With 2 choppas, each knob will have 5 attacks, hitting on 3s at strength 5, AP 1, dealing 1 damage. Should they all fight, it would be 45 attacks. And when our warlord calls a wah, it instead would be 54 attacks at strength 6. And if you charge your target with another unit, you can use the Blood Axe's stratagem Got Him Trapped allowing each hit roll of 6 to score one additional hit, making the squad of veteran knobs quite the blender of a unit. And of course, these veterans will have their own transport truck. Now I think it's about time we should circle over to the commanders, which of course tie this army together. Serving as the platoon commander is a big mech in mega armor. He's equipped with a teleport blasta and custom shooter. One command point has been spent to give him the relic, the straight shooter giving him a sickening amount of sniper shots to fire off against an enemy character, all of which can inflict a mortal wound in addition to the normal damage on wound rolls of 6. And for another command point, he has been given the trait 
I've got a plan, lads. This allows you to redeploy three units from your army after deployment is done, allowing you to be dead sneaky with bait and switches during the deployment game. It also allows those redeploying units to be placed into strategic reserves freely if you feel it's necessary, which is yet another ace to have up your sleeve. And serving as the company commander is a war boss, taken with a power claw. We're spending two command points on him to give him a relic and a trait. The relic is to kill a claw, to make him a far deadlier and more reliable combatant. And the trait is cunning but brutal, which gives him fight first in the fight phase. And perhaps most importantly, being a war boss on foot allows him to call a wa, which provides core and character units with advance and charge, and provides all orc models with plus one strength, plus one attack, and a five up invulnerable save. This segues nicely into some of our more potent units. Bring in some heavy firepower are two units of high riders. Each of these defcopta units are five strong, all loaded up with rocket launchers, though one squad is a unit of boom boys. It results in each of these units letting loose between 10 and 30 rockets at strength 8, AP 2 dealing 3 damage. And as blast weapons, the unit of boom boys will have an extra layer of AP. To add to that, the defcoptas will make great use of the wa bonuses. The invuln is certainly good to have on these multi-wound squads, but after factoring in the melee bonuses, each copta will make 9 attacks with their spinning blades at strength 6, AP 1, 1 damage, giving them quite the volume of attacks. And the last unit of this list is of course bringing in some heavy armor. It just wouldn't be a proper regimental force without a squadron of tanks. Serving as our premier armor on tracks unit is a unit of grot tanks. The unit is 5 strong, and all of them are taken with shooters to bring the DACA. And that's the list, clocking in at 1999 points. To be perfectly honest, this list is eerily similar to something I was thinking of realizing, and so I found the making of this video to provide me with a bit of wish fulfillment. As for the list itself, I think it meets the theme of trying to proxy the orc units into an Imperial Guard style formation, while keeping the flexible stealthy forward deploying tricks in tow. That's a wrap on this Blood Axes thematic list build. Thanks for watching, and a special thanks to my patrons, Julius Maximus, as well as the others who help keep the dream alive, and who populate the nominations for thematic list builds. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to drop them down below. Anyways, there are buttons for liking, sharing, and subscribing. So press the buttons you want to press, and I'll catch you in the next one.